everyone. Happy Sabbath to you all. I will begin by this morning by asking a question. Has anyone ever seen the movie Training Day? That was the name of a movie a few weeks ago. Uh, that was done a few years ago. I have a picture of it. Uh, the, the promo and it starred Denzel Washington and Ethan Hawke and it was a crime thriller about a veteran police officer who was played by Denzel Washington and he escorts a rookie police officer as a officer on his first day on the job who was Ethan Hawke and they were members of the LA Police, Los Angeles Police Department Drug Unit. Now, Mr. Washington's role was to train this new police officer and prepare him for the things that he will face on the job. Now, Denzel Washington won the Best Actor Award for his performance in this film. And in fact, it was the only Oscar he won for Best Actor. I believe he won an Oscar for a supporting role in another film. Now, just like how Ethan Hawke had to be trained by a senior police officer before he could be allowed to handle the job on his own, similarly, brethren, we have to be trained and prepared for our future responsibilities in the kingdom of God. And we are now in training and preparation for our roles as kings and priests in that coming kingdom. So, brethren, in the sermon this morning, I want to focus on this preparation process that we are now in. Now, for those who like the title, the title of the seminar is Preparation Day. Now, just like how the sixth day, or Friday, is the preparation day for the Sabbath, we are now in the preparation day for the establishment of the Kingdom of God. The 6,000 years of Satan's rule on this earth will soon end. God is preparing us to replace Satan and his demons as the future rulers of the world alongside Jesus Christ. And today is our preparation day for the kingdom of God. And our training officer is none other than Jesus Christ, who is our king and high priest. So let's go to John chapter 14 for our first scripture. John chapter 14. And let's look at verse 2. It's a scripture we all know. Jesus is speaking to his disciples. In my father's house are many mansion, mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Brethren, Jesus is preparing us for specific positions in the kingdom of God. Now, how is he preparing us for these positions? Let's look at one of the vital steps in the process. And let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And let's look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Brethren, God and Jesus Christ are directly involved in the preparation process. <coughs> The process begins when we receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit provides us with the power to change and to grow, to develop 
the mind and character of God. Now, God the Father and Jesus Christ also prepare certain circumstances, certain experiences, certain trials and tests to help us prepare for the kingdom of God. And there are many examples in the Bible that we can look at, but I want to look at the one that is given in Jonah, in the book of Jonah. So let's go to Jonah and let's look at chapter 1 of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1 and verse 17. We are all familiar with uh, what happened with Jonah. Verse 17. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. But then God gave Jonah a job to do. And he refused to do it. As we all know, he tried to run away. Now God then intervened to get him to change his mind. And God prepared a great fish, especially for Jonah. Brethren, God will similarly prepare situations and experiences specifically to lead us in the direction that He wants. Now, God did not just stop there. He continued to work with Jonah. And let's move over to Jonah chapter 4. Jonah 4, and let's look at verse 6. Verse 6. And the Lord God prepared a plant. Notice, prepared, the word prepared. And make it come up over Jonah that it might be a shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But as morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm. And it so damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun rose, arose that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Brethren, Jonah had a bad attitude. And God continued to prepare situations to help Jonah correct his attitude. He prepared a plant, prepared a womb, he prepared an east wind. Brethren, and just as God did these things for Jonah, he does it for us as well. Many of the situations we face in life have been prepared by God to teach us vital lessons in order to prepare us for the kingdom of God. But God cannot do it all by himself. We also have a part to play in the preparation process. I want to look at two things we must be doing in this preparation process. And the first thing I would like to look at is that we must prepare our hearts to see God. And let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 19 and let's begin in verse 1. Now this is the incident with King Jehoshaphat, verse 1. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Nevertheless, good things are found in you, in that you have removed the wooden images from the land and have prepared second yeah, second, sorry, second Chronicles verse 19. Sorry about that. Yes, second Chronicles verse 19. Chapter, chapter 19. Sorry, yes, chapter 19, verse 1 to 3. We're reading verse 1 to 3. 
Antik. Um, I'll start back from verse 1. Then Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned safely to his house in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Should you help the wicked and love those who hate the Lord? Therefore the wrath of the Lord is upon you. Nevertheless, good things are found in you in that you have removed the wooden images from the land and have prepared your heart to seek the Lord. Brethren, as we notice here, Jehoshaphat prepared his heart to seek the Lord. And as with all of us, Jehoshaphat made some mistakes in his life. He formed an alliance with King Ahab. And as we know, Ahab was a wicked king. But he had a quality which God focused on. He prepared his heart to seek God. And as a result, God overlooked his mistakes and blessed him. If you continue to read in, the, in chapter 20, you will see how God intervened when Jehoshaphat prayed for protection for the nation of Israel. So brethren, we have to ask ourselves, are we preparing our hearts to seek God? Now the second point I would like to focus on is we must know the scriptures. And let's go to 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. We read to 16 from 16 to 17. This is another memory scripture. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, or you could use the word prepared, for every good work. The knowledge of the scriptures helps us to become complete and prepares us to do the work of God. Are we preparing for our roles as teachers and priests in the kingdom of God by growing in the knowledge of the scriptures? Now, question can be asked. Suppose we fail to prepare as we should. Are there any consequences for not preparing properly for our roles in the kingdom of God? <coughs> and let's go to Luke chapter 12 for the answer that Jesus gives. Luke chapter 12 and let's look at verse 45 to 47. This is the parable of the servants. Verse 45. But if that servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat the male and female servants, and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant, who knew his father's will, and did not prepare himself, or do according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. Notice the words, brethren, and did not prepare himself. The servant who fails to prepare will be beaten with many stripes. Brethren, we know our Father's will. Are we doing it? Or are we preoccupied with other things? So in conclusion, brethren, God used John the Baptist to prepare the way for Jesus Christ at his first coming. Similarly, brethren, 
we have been called to prepare the way for Jesus' second coming. So let us not fail in this important responsibility that we have been given. And for one final scripture, let's go to Amos chapter 4. Amos chapter 4 and verse 12. Amos chapter 4 verse 12. Therefore, thus will I do to you, O Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, O Israel. Brethren, as we prepare to meet our God, let us not waste this preparation day that we are now in. Let us all be ready and waiting for the return of our Lord and Savior, 